to comedy with Hillary Herbert, and today we are joined with the one, the only, the famous, the requested Nikki Bond. I can't believe I'm requested. You requ- of course you're requested. Thank you. Of course you're requested. Thank you very much. We're so grateful that you uh, give us the time of day. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I've got time in my day for this. Um, so we were, so you were just recently, it was so funny to me because we were talking about the, you had been requested by the feet people. You were big in, you were, you're big in feet, even though you have little petite ones, like would be my preference if I were into feet. Okay. Um, I would reject myself. You wouldn't be. What size are you? I'm a nine and a half. Okay. Which is in. But your body, you're tall. Yeah. It's, it's fine. It's fair. They, I've noticed they read a little long on camera. (laughs) I'm not comfortable with it, but (laughs) (laughs) okay. (laughs) When I wear here feet people, when I wear, um, my, I wear a lot of leg warmers Yeah, and it cuts, like I know my lines, Uh, I know my angles. So it cuts my foot in a way that makes it appealing, more appealing to me. And so maybe I'll start to wear my leg warmers. It's like feet cleavage. Yeah. Yeah. You get, wow. Okay. Yeah. Whereas like maybe somebody with shorter legs wouldn't want to wear, a boot, like a boot, like a certain, certain, a boot at a certain, you don't want to cut yeah. the, you want everything to be streamlined. Yes. Where for me, I want to cut it off. Cut it off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you were requested and we talked about, and you were like, well, I'm not showing my feet. You don't, you were like, do they pay you? And I was like, no, yeah. no, no. Uh, they're my, I mean, significantly large, largest part of my fan base. And, uh, and, so no, I don't get anything from it other than lovely compliments That's and nice. views, and I I'll take it. And you were saying how uh, you know you were like, oh no, I would need to be paid for that, and I love that. And uh, but I was having a conversation with you in my head, and I was like, oh no, like I'm more like performing for the troops, you know, I'll okay. just really just give it away. Wow. And then I watch your stories and you're getting on a plane <laughs> to go part. perform for the troops, which I imagine you got paid for that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do shit for free. <laughs> I don't have that. I'm a, I'm a giver. I'm a, like it, it, not in a pour too much out of my cup yeah. way, maybe when I was younger, but, um, it's, usually in a way that the, what I receive back is filling to me and I right. can constantly keep doing it. But it financially, I don't have a, I don't know if it's something, it almost even makes me uncomfortable. I don't like to, I'm not comfortable and I don't have the energy of receiving even money comes in, you know, like I'm, I married someone with a lot right. of money. I mean, yeah. I, I I grew up in a in an affluent town, so it was always sort of a part of my lifestyle. Yeah. But never having, never making my own money, and and receiving in that way to a point where it makes me uncomfortable. I would rather do things and give myself in a way that that is its own reward than get involved in. I mean, I don't know if I ever see myself signing, you know what I mean? I don't know that it's not in my uh, makeup. Yeah. But not necessarily in a, I don't know if it's a good or bad thing, probably more of a bad thing, but uh, it's it. And so then the, the admiration of like the independent woman that is, not only juggling, you know, all the other aspects of life, but you're doing that kind of stuff is like, (laughs) and then not doing it for free. I was like the rate. I was like, no, I need more money because here's the thing. You told him that. Yeah. I needed more money because I, I will donate my time to old people. I've, I really want to, I want to volunteer at an old person's home. I tried to reach out to a bunch. They rejected me, but I used to take like my old neighbor's grocery shopping and just like I, that, I, I love to do that. But anything that's going to make me uncomfortable or anything that isn't within my comfort zone, I need to be paid for. And 
getting on a plane, a really small, terrifying plane. And I'm afraid of, A, I'm afraid of war. I've been since a kid. I'm Canadian. So it's like, I, I know, obviously troops are very, they're serving and they're doing great things. But I did, I grew up in Canada that our world wasn't revolved around that. And so war was a very foreign thing to me. I was terrified of it. I've seen a plane crash. It was a, an army plane. So I was like, I need to get on an army plane and stay on an island where there's nothing for 12 hours and sleep over. I need fucking money. So did they request you? Were the, did they get to the men get together and go like, we want no, Nikki? No, no. There is a guy. There's a bunch of guys that are people, comics that like do troop uh, shows and so he had seen me at a festival like a long time ago and he was like oh yeah Nikki come do it and then I said how much and then he said and he goes and we were gonna get on a plane and I was like how big is it and he said it's a prop plane and I was like I'm not doing it like I I honestly was like I'm not doing it you'd have to pay me five hundred dollars and because I'm gonna have to take Xanax I'm gonna have to like go through all this shit and then the more I thought about it the more I was like okay I'll I'll beat a fear. And then he offered me a price. It was two fifty, And I was like, no. And so then he upped it a bit. And I, and I did it cause I was like, I need to face this fear. And it was very, it felt very good to perform for the troops. But then at the same time, it was like, uh, in respect cause they're working their ass off. There was construction people in the audience that work on the Island. It was everybody on the Island. And when I realized these people don't have entertainment, it felt very good to give back, yeah. but you're going to have to pay me to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. An old person's home. You don't have to pay me. Yeah. Like if, if there's, if I have to go give a talk for uh, college students, uh, you know, yeah, you know what I mean. Like, there's certain things I yeah. volunteer my time in other ways. Yeah, that I'm, I'm like, no, you got to pay me. Yeah, showing my feet, I, I got wicked wiki feet. Yeah, I, I'm on there. I didn't put myself on, so I'm like, I know that I could make profit. I don't want to be giving my my assets away. You got to pay me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, maybe if I had money, I wouldn't ask for so much. You know, <laughs> maybe I'd be like, okay, I'll give back. But I'm like, I'm poor. I need some money. You well, know? you're being in your apartment. I know you're not poor, but um, <laughs> rent controlled. And my husband makes the money. Right, Really now. beautiful yeah. place. Thank you. Um, Yeah. When I started teaching pole, I taught uh, the moms in Topanga for free. The I moms love at that. my son's school. And I was giving them classes for maybe a month or so, or maybe two, I don't know how long, maybe it was longer than that. I have, I don't remember. And they, one day after class, we were just sort of cooling down and they were like, Hillary, you need to charge for this. Like we, yes. we insist that you charge us. And I was like, well, it felt really good because I was like, okay, well I have clearly that I have something to offer in this way. Cause the teaching thing came as like a total out of, I had no expectation or ever thought that I wanted to share myself in that way it just yeah. wasn't on my radar and it just evolved into that and so I was like okay and so I charged the there's a going rate that for pull that you don't it's not a not it's frowned down upon to undercut that rate so everybody yeah. charges this amount and an hour and blah 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 so, so like I charged that yeah. and then, but I couldn't, I, I, from the beginning, I just donated it. Cause I was like, I couldn't, you did? I donated every penny always. Uh, cause I couldn't, I don't know. I, wow. it feels like, I'm not sure. It just, it's, I think partly because I have a certain amount of money. So that makes it easier. Yeah, I yeah. used to always say, people called me, um, like my girlfriends, I, if they would, I think generous is the number one adjective that yes, would be what they would generous. describe me yeah. as. And so I used to think, I used to joke, well, when I, before I was teaching or really making my own money, uh, it's easy to be generous with someone else's money. That's what I would say. Yeah, I was like, well, yeah, it's easy yeah. to be generous with someone else's yeah. money. But then I think back and I and I go, oh no, I've always been that way. It's just always been that way. Yeah. But there's things I'm not generous about. Like I remember when I found out I was having a boy, I was happy for a number of reasons. But uh, that I was like, oh, the, the, I'm not gonna have a daughter who's gonna steal my clothes. I'm not generous with That's sharing. Like when a friend's really like, can funny. I borrow a thing? I'm like, you know, I'm kind of like that too. These clothes are so personal to yeah. me that it's yeah. not, no, I'd prefer to buy you a new something. 
to have you wear my because I don't even like new stuff all the time. I love like a good thrift or a good, you know, whatever yeah. that has some energetic character yeah, to yeah, it yeah. Um, yeah. as opposed to something fresh out of the box. So so it's really personal to me yeah. a lot of times. This is something that I'm wearing. And uh, I don't, I'm not generous in that way. Although my friend, my coach Amanda will say, I'll give you the shirt off my back, but that's actually the one thing you're that like, I won't but- do. <laughs> You're like, actually, not the shirt, but yeah. uh, some money. Yeah, I'll give you the like, money yeah. that comes from the shirt pocket. Well, the bad habit I have that wherever financially I am down the line, um, which will probably, well, who knows? Uh, I I can pay, like, I don't even want to say the parking thing right now because I'll get in trouble for it. But I can pay to get out of things. Yes, yes, And it is the biggest luxury, the biggest flex of, like, I would say being able to relax and have relief about things. Yeah. Going, you know what? I'll just, don't be mad at me here. Honestly, (laughs) I, I'm It's not healthy. I know that. No, but I'm starting to understand that because, like, my apartment I've had for 10 years, it's rent controlled. And the past two years, like I've been really struggling financially in terms of like my husband pays my rent, like that helped a lot, you know? And then, and we had our money separate and now we've conjoined our money. Thank God. And there is something that I've, and I'm like, Oh, maybe I can, Oh, I can get a Hulu subscription that even that I'm like, Oh, we're going to split. Oh, this is, not just me paying for it and the freedom I feel. Yeah. Like, even just to be like, ah, oh, it, it's And doesn't crazy. it make you want to have sex with them a little bit more? It did bring a connection. Yep. Mm-hmm. It seemed surface. And he was like, it's, I don't understand no. why Let you want this. Let the man provide. It feels Let nice. the man provide. It's just less worry. Yeah. And then I can appreciate all this instead of being like, oh, yeah, well, all my money goes into this place. And yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I can get... I can get Hulu. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. That's been recent? That's been recent. Wow. Oh, that makes me more relaxed. (laughs) I love that. But we still separate. Like, I have to go to a friend's wedding in Mexico, and it's going to cost so much money. That's going to come out of just, we still have, like, separate bank accounts, Mm -hmm. but we have, like, our family account, and I love it. But then that, I like, even so whatever I make, I put into it a percentage, but then the Mexico trip, I'm like, well, can I just like keep one paycheck to pay for it? And he's like, no. <laughs> Cause now I'm like, Oh, we still have that separate. So that's yeah, still, yeah. I can't, you like- haven't, well, oh, there's a few tricks you can do for that kind of thing. Oh. Like the, Oh, just like make it, can we, can it just be like an early birthday present? Yes. And then the birthday comes and they still have to get you a present anyway. Yes, kind of thing. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah. My birthday's in April. Start. And I, I will suggest more dick sucking. That would it goes okay. a long way. Okay, goes you think a long they'll way. notice? Okay, I I'll suck. Some just more when dick. you're when you're sucking the dick, you just be like, <laughs> "Thank you so much." Trip, 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 trip. trip. Can't wait for Mexico. <laughs> oh, I can't afford it. <laughs> Because then it'll satisfy that part of you too. It's like, yeah. I'm not doing this unless I get paid for it. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there we go. There we go. Things that I don't like that I'd like to get paid for. Yeah, yeah. Sucking just dick. put it on the list. All right, there we go. We came around full circle. Why it's another thing I'll that? just give away for free. Yes. Uh, no, I have, I don't see, and anyone that's been into my Instagram account recently can see that I don't. Respond. I don't, I get a lot of, um, I get a lot of, Hey, you know, great video, you know, hot. Oh, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. And, and, and really very respectful. I don't get any, if I get any then that aren't, I mean, it almost never comes up. Okay. Uh, and then like, uh, like, thanks. And that's the, Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I don't An get easy, any easy breezy yeah. inbox. Okay. Yeah. I okay. think I, when I, the, the few times that I've had someone be gross, I'm always confused. I'm like, wow, you really don't know how to read the type of person I am. And I think that's what happens most of the time. Most of these people are going like, this isn't the girl that's going to whatever. You're strong. Yeah. Like it's not going to be just not interested. It's gross too. It makes me feel bad. Yeah. But um, Nikki, do you know, so I, 
mentioned before we started shadow talk. No, I don't know what Which that is, is something that I just, I knew was a thing that I did, used to more than I like to, and I worked on it. But then I realized with the podcast, I think it's come up again. And okay. then I was watching TikTok the other day, and which I, thought, I thought dialed we were, back okay. significantly. <laughs> But I needed some, I needed some, I, I'm recently on it a little more again. And I'll tell you, when I come in and out, when I come back in, the, the, the algorithm is algorithming. I mean, they are hitting me with, it's as if they, it's, I feel they know me. Okay. They know I'm, they're sending me the information I need in the moment. I really they figured you out. They and I, know and I'm talking on. very specifically about the, the TikTok tarot card readers. So so you're like, they're reading, they're listening to me. Uh, probably. Yeah. Yes. Okay, but the tarot card readers. Uh, the tarot card readers are, I guess, just excellent at their jobs because they get very specific. And I go, and these are readings that like, if you look, they're readings for the, what do they call it? For the collective. Oh, really? So they'll read and they'll say, take whatever resonates with you. And if it doesn't, you know, this, this reading's not for you. Okay. And, but the algorithm is so tight that it really sends the ones that are more applicable. So one, uh, I would just love the confirmation. I got one, I mentioned it in my, I shared it in my stories the other day. Uh, this tarot card reader was like, someone accidentally said your name instead of someone else's name and it didn't they said one person found it very funny and one person found it very not funny and I just I heard it and I was like I think that's true I think that really happened and so all I want sometimes is some it, I don't even have to be right. Okay. I just wish I knew, you know, of that, like who, what I was picturing. Did that really happen? Okay. And I hope one day I can get that, like, yay or nay. Yeah, one way or the other. Are you asking? Um, sure. If you want to answer that question. Yeah. Um, we'd like to know. If you're listening to this going, oh, I just did that recently. I did that. Yeah. With yes. your name, then please let me know. Yeah. It would be very satisfying. I would like, I would like them to fess up as well so please do that i also feel like you should scooch in a bit okay if the feet people want your yeah feet. they do you they know do. what i mean thank you thank you for nikki i was you know what i knew that they weren't in frame and it makes josh so uncomfortable that i didn't want to make you uncomfortable so i was like i'm not, not gonna push feet. it i don't care thank you and listen you if it's your it's your shit like what i can't Thank there you. you go. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. I'm going to a hair appointment after this. And so I, I'm i just trying to... Your where are we doing great. it? In You're the good. ponytail or out of the ponytail? Well, now we have half and half. Yeah, I know. And I do that sometimes. Let's like I'll commit. change yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this okay. now. Yeah, I like that. They're both good. Okay. Um, We just need to keep the feet people happy. Okay, so yeah. shadow talk okay. is something that it's... <sighs> I'm going to describe it, but it's a little different than what I'm going to describe. Okay. So it's basically saying one thing, but the reason you're saying it is because your shadow is really feeling something else. Whoa. And it's a self-protection, I believe, uh, like an ego self-protection type of uh, um, behavior. Okay. So... I notice that you don't do it. Can you give me an example? Yeah. Uh, so when I do it, I will overcompensate. So I've talked a lot about feelings on here and all that stuff. I'll overcompensate. I have such a fear of sharing certain vulnerabilities, even though I appear to be very open, mm -hmm. that I will overcompensate with maybe how much I don't care I see. With okay. to cover what to me is so obviously a deep, embarrassingly, you know, yeah. amount of caring. Okay. So uh, it is 
not an attractive quality if you can see it in some, if you can see someone doing it, it's not an attractive quality. And I guess I just noticed, I saw, I'd never really had a word for it before. And it, I, I really stopped doing it for a while, but the pot, you know, the, the sharing so much is so that sometimes I realize like through the, the growth of me as a person and the, and the podcast yeah. on its own, uh, is, and I love like, you're kind of like a, when you come on, it's like a checkpoint, you know, yeah, of, yeah, like yeah, where yeah, we're yeah. at yeah. that, uh, I, I guess it's come up for me in a big way Okay, that, and I also partly do a thing where as sharing as I am, I, you're like, unless someone is actually privately getting to know me, you're actually not, you really can't get to know me through, even though it seems like I'm sharing my life in this way, you're not really getting to know me by just getting information. Stories. Stories. Yeah. Yeah. Off the podcast. And so I think I play with that a little bit to keep everyone at a distance. Yeah. Because you know, surprise, surprise, you know, like yeah, that's yeah, yeah. not, you know, anyway. So I just thought it was interesting. And I, I, I think it came up on my feed last night and I was like, knowing that I was going to see you, I was like, Nikki doesn't do that. Do you ever feel that you do do that? And I don't, I just maybe don't see it um, or I'm not around it. Let me think. Uh, if I act like I don't care or it's any sort of, uh, presentation that you're leading people to believe one thing Sort of like look over here mm. so they don't see what's going on over here is, is it's really hard to describe because it's such a subtle yet um, what I believe is kind of an unappealing way of, of presenting oneself. I don't think I do that, but I think I do the opposite of like really like showing my insecurities or admitting. I think I need to do that a bit more because I think I am way too like oh, I don't know. Like, for example, long story short, there's like a showcase that's happening for Netflix is a joke and everybody and their mother has a fucking audition and I didn't get one and I didn't know how we were supposed to get one and I feel really left out and like, I want this opportunity and this isn't fair and like, you know, and I'm very much like, well, I guess I'm not good enough. Like I'm saying that out loud or not woe is me, but just more like, well, like last night I went into work and I was like, really cool. I get to watch everybody showcase this opportunity that I'm not getting. And I'm too honest about it. See, I think that's so appealing. I think it's so appealing because it's so relatable. There's no one that wouldn't feel that way yeah. in that situation that it's a perfect example. What would be so unappealing and unattractive is if you were, and maybe somebody in that situation really wouldn't care, but I don't know a lot of comics that wouldn't really yeah, care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is if you were like, well, you know, opportunities come when they're meant to come. Yes. Right. I mean, suck my dick. Yeah, suck my fucking, oh, is that what you wow. mean? Wow. Yeah. So how did those people, so right, exactly. So you don't do it. And just my impression would be like, I guess if someone were going to use that vulnerability against you in some way, but there's really no way to use that against you because the competition in that has already passed. It's true, but I do think that my attitude could be annoying sometimes to comics that are my friends who, or, or when I do bring it up, like comics were actually very supportive yesterday when I would say it to them, but I don't want people to feel like they then have to be like, no, Nikki, you're great. And I think that sometimes my self-consciousness or my self-doubt makes people have to do that. And I can understand why that would be annoying. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, well, I haven't yeah, gotten yeah, this. Yeah. I hope I can get this. Well, no, you're doing great. I wish that I had that. And they're like, you're funny. She, you're funny. And I feel like there's a little bit, I'm not Eeyore, but there's a little bit uh, that I'm like, this could be annoying to people instead of just having the confidence and being like, I fucking deserve this. Oh, well. You know, yeah, I think that from my experience, when you're friends but also competing, you're never gonna get they they they'd prefer to have the opportunity to have to build you up because they yeah. got an opportunity that you didn't interest than yeah. actually 
tell you that when they're alone, they might worry that you're actually funnier than them. You know what I mean? It's people get so insecure that you're never going to get the emotional buildup from a f- no matter how whatever how close your comedian friends are yeah you need to get that build up from friends that aren't in the comedy world because they'll actually you know they, lo- they fill you outsider they're opinion. not yeah, yeah and they're not competing with you it's n- there's no conflict of interest there yeah where like uh, yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about annoying them. I'm sure they're okay, okay. <laughs> feeling I feel just like, fine. Yeah, I feel also, like it could be like... fuck you, everyone that got on that show. <laughs> Some people really deserved it. And they're I'm my sure friends. they they're did. So... <laughs> they're so funny. But a lot of people, I'm like, what? And so, yeah. You know what know. they do? Suck dick. They suck the dick. That must be nice. Or or they're like young and they look like they might suck the dick. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. That's just... another thing that comes up is it's um, and maybe as a married woman, does that help you? It's dealing with men and opportunities is such a fucking chess game that I was watching maybe on TikTok too. Um, <laughs> Nikki's so She's concerned. I really have TikTok. clothes to fold. I really shouldn't be looking at it. <laughs> I really shouldn't. Okay. But um, uh, uh, sometimes it keeps me company. Leave me alone. So uh, there was a, a, I don't even know who she was, maybe an actress or something. And she talked about this, I forget what they called it, this sort of look or something that you kind of have to give into where for she was using the example of going on a late night talk show and the host was coming down to say, you know, to greet her. And there's a part of the interaction that you have to kind of whore yourself over for just a moment of letting them know uh, sort of like the way that they say hello to you and the way you say hello back like i would sleep with you what? kind of like a very quiet it's a thing it's a it's a and they put it so perfectly i wish i could i can't remember who the person is or what it was but i probably saved it um a they're not going to try to sleep with you but they want to know if they wanted to that you're not gonna you're not rejecting them in that moment it's very subtle but it's a it's absolutely a thing does that does 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 sexual politics i know the me too thing you know really blew a lot of stuff up and i have always had a strong opinion that some of it went way too far uh but there is an element of of men and i think it's just a lack of awareness and I guess integrity that they whatever way they're wired they'll They'll they're self-serving almost no matter what the situation I haven't noticed that too much um I also am really good at friend zoning and playing platonic, but I do know the look that you're talking about. And it's not even necessarily like it's not comics. It's like, you know, when you if your friend introduces you to a guy and then hello, nice to meet you. And then they hold the eye yeah. contact a little bit longer yeah. to be like, hey. And you're like, oh, I see. Yeah. You know what I mean? And what I've heard guys say or some the psychoanalysis of it is that they the ego, the guy's ego, as much as we sometimes I think feel like we need to baby them a little bit, their ego goes, oh, she wants me. Yeah. Any amount of sort of friendly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, 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 yeah, it's wild. My husband, I was not into him and his storyline in his head was that I wanted him. And I was like, I did not want you. I wanted your friend that we got in such a long argument about it, like a friendly (laughs) argument. But like, I was like, I was not, he's like, yes, you were, you were into me. I was like, no, I truly wasn't that I made us go to the beginning of our texts 
and go through them and have him see that I was avoiding him. And that's when he was like, oh my God, you were. But this whole time he thought that I was into him and I wasn't at all. It took him two months to finally get me to tr- come around. Yeah, 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 He's yeah. He's a cocky fuck. Yeah. He thinks everybody's into him. That Well, it's the the all, almost all the men, not all the men. It's insane. Not all the men, but almost all the men. Some yeah. of them are truly, you know, not so presumptuous or whatever. I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. Honestly, I when I was on the island, the Navy, with the boys, the, there was another comic there, and he was 29. You could put this up, but, like, don't clip it, because I wouldn't want him to say, you know. Don't clip it, Josh. Don't. Josh has a knack for clipping don't. whatever I don't want him to clip. I will he clips, and I'm just you, like, Josh. But he was, like, very, he was super hot, 29, built, super nice, passionate about comedy, and by no means gave off, I mean, I am almost 10 years older than him, but by no means gave off this, like, oh, you're into me vibe. When I first met him, I went, Kiss! Because I was like, oh, classic, hot douchebag, probably like thinks everybody likes him. And then such an innocence that I was like, okay, I was wrong about that. Like he turned out to be so nice and have like deep thoughts and it, it was great, you know. And if he wasn't there, I, it would have been a, a nightmare because we were on the same page. We, mm. we were like, we, we were like, well, can we go on a walk? Can we see the outdoors? Can we do? And so that was refreshing because yeah, I yeah, really yeah, did judge yeah. him at first. And I yeah. thought that he was going to be into himself and then yeah. he really wasn't. And then it made him hotter. Yeah. 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 And then we sure. fucked. No, we didn't. I'm oh, just joking. I'm just joking. It would have been joking. great. <laughs> I, the fantasies when you got, when that plane didn't come to pick you up right away, the fantasies I had for you that went through my mind, <laughs> I was, first I was going to tell you, find the, find the strongest, find the leader. Okay. And suck his dick. Oh, oh. so he will protect. Because I thought you were going to be stuck there forever. Yeah, you know, they, I did you too. You eventually would be torn apart by all these men. Yes. So yes. we needed a game plan. Yes. And so my fantasy was that you found the the leader. Okay. You sucked his dick. Now you're his. Yes. You know, I'm and safe. he will make sure that you are protected. It, that will only last for a certain amount of time. You eventually will be raped by all of them. That's just how it works. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because they'll kill him. I'm assuming no one can get off the island at that point. No and that you all live there forever. Yeah, that's what I, yeah. So it only lasts for so long. And this is based on historical events that I've seen on TikTok. And uh, <laughs> it's true. It's true. Okay. So, uh, but the, the it, there were parts of it that I didn't think you would find appealing. No, I wish you told me. But I found appealing for you. Oh my God, this is great. I I, we that. had been texting a certain yeah, amount that yeah. I I didn't want to text again. Oh my god! I, so I didn't yeah. give the uh, I want, the I advice. Know, I like the whole, <laughs> I like that advice. It's funny because when I came back to land and I said to my husband and I was like, "Well, I honestly thought I was going to be stuck there and I'd have to like start procreating." And yeah. he's like, "What? Exactly? Yeah." But I did I did think I was like, "All right, well." Um, you went into you went into female survival mode. I did go into female yeah. Survival. What do I have to offer? Yeah. What? Who's going to be my my mate? And I'll because yeah. t- like I'll be honest. In terms of the Navy, I, I might get hate for this, but a lot of them, they're just, they're fat. They're fat. The Navy's fat? Yeah. A lot of them are fat. I don't. Really? I mean, I saw a lot of the, I didn't see all the Navy. Let's, you know, there wasn't no, that hold on. I just want to, I know the gentlemen are very sensitive. I've always found different sizes of men. Oh, yeah. That's very attractive. We just, just picture a man in a uniform like that. If you're going to fight. We we expect you to yeah. be stopped. Yeah, that's all. That's yes. all. But you can be whatever size you are. But Interesting. I was, I was, I mean, some were construction workers, some were medics, but I was like, huh, I was very, but then the ones in the suits, I was like, that's a big, it's a big belly. Are you fighting for me? And honestly, the most fit one there was the comic. So he would have been the one oh, to save God. me. Is that crazy? Oh, my God. I mean, what a... Hey, I think we have some storyline there. I think that could make for a funny... Okay. Like a little... Uh, like a rom-com. Okay. Or something. Stuck on the island. Stuck on the island. And the comedian is the one that saves you. And the Navy's doing TikTok dances. That's pretty jokes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it's probably the food because the food is, you know... Okay. Anyways, that's my update. And I'm glad that you were thinking the same way I was because I was like, am I crazy? I, I just kind of all of a sudden was like, all right, well, who's going to be my guy? Yeah. And what, what's going to happen next? Yeah. And then. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. 
I felt like I was off to war. And yeah. I needed yeah. to I needed to have sex with somebody. You needed to serve. I needed to serve. <laughs> And then I come home and I'm like, I'm alive. Oh, yeah, oh fuck. Yeah, yeah. I had an affair. But could you blame me? I yeah. never knew if I was coming home again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, 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 I hate realistic movies, like movies that are, um, I, it depends. They, they, if it's, if there's a love interest, it needs, they need to be fucking by the end of the movie. Yeah. Or I am not happy. Yes, yes. So I hated, loved, hate, I mean, it was a great movie and I really don't like Tom Hanks anymore, but I, I watched all Tom Hanks movies growing up, but my, my dad took me to see, uh, what's the one where he's on the island? Oh, um, what? Castaway. Castaway. Good. I would tough. not have come up I, with that I title. Really, yeah, I can say Wilson is the volleyball, but I yeah. could not remember the title of the movie. Um, he's away, and Helen Hunt's character remarries and has a kid. Yeah. I hate that. That's not based on a true story, right? Yeah. That yeah. was somebody who wrote that. Fuck you. Because you want her to wait for him. Yeah. Yeah. You were in love. Yeah. How many years did she wait? Three? <laughs> Fuck you, you slut. Oh, your biological clock was ticking? Yeah. Fuck you. Have a romantic bone in your body. Well, did they end up, when he came back, did they end up getting together or no? He went to her house, met, so they they had their interaction. The, the child was upstairs sleeping. The husband was maybe away on a trip or upstairs sleeping too. I don't remember. They had their moment where you realize, oh, she's moved on yeah. he accepts it Ooh. and he leaves and we left the movie and my dad said because in the movie he's like you just get up the next day and you keep going when the sun comes up you get up the next day and you just keep going and my dad who was like in the shit in vietnam uh, -huh. uh said yeah like he didn't speak a lot <laughs> i mean he was he was very funny he didn't say too much emotionally those were short and you either had to yeah. get it or not. Yeah. And uh, so he said, yeah, like he wanted me to know, like, that's what you do. You get up and you keep going. And it's got to be, I mean, for how much I shit on my parents, the small pieces of advice that I got from them, even for my mom, like make a list. Yeah. yeah really yeah, great. Yeah. Really great advice. Have a place for that. everything. I mean, yeah. really life altering advice because yeah. you see people that don't have that yeah you go, Ooh. yeah uh so you know you get up and you keep going is yep but god i hate that movie yeah that makes it i i think if you're gonna write the movie it should be she can have sex with people sure. and have an affair and all that but kind of when stuff. he comes back abandon the whole ship. thing abandon ship i no mean way. know that like yeah i'm just a real yeah I agree true with you. romantic in like sacrifice the rest of your life for that yeah belief yeah yeah i or mean what is the point if maybe 10 years go by but three's not very much yeah 15, 10 he's probably dead yeah yeah because how could he survive but three isn't yeah. three yeah, you had a kid within three years of knowing someone that's not real love no yeah and all the realists go yeah, well, that's a, no, not into. I, I'm with you on that. Thank you. Yeah. Something else I learned on TikTok uh, was uh, I have I always knew that I had a very vivid imagination, and mm -hmm. I suppose I knew that it was more vivid than most people's, but I didn't realize that that that, that what arranged there was yeah so i learned about i have hyper fantasia huh and then there's a fantasia which is like you can't picture anything and if i'm saying the words wrong sorry okay uh so there's a scale on so if i said i'm curious where you are if if there's a scale like picture an apple in your head you either can't picture it to you can picture something red to you can and then to the more detail to you can picture the apple you can picture the 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 texture okay. of the inside of the apple you can see a fully realized apple in your head do you have a a range um 
I guess I can see a two-dimensional apple. Like a drawing of an apple. Oh, really? Yeah. But you can't picture like someone slicing into an apple and the juice dripping out of the apple and the texture of the inside of the apple. and I can see it. I couldn't feel it. Like I wouldn't be able to feel the texture, but I can see the inside and I can see the seed. Yeah. Okay. But I couldn't feel like when I would do acting class and they were like, okay, it's cold. And people's bodies would be like, <laughs> I couldn't do that. I can't change temperature of my body. Well, that's bullshit. That's why. <laughs> terrible acting class that's fine. but i can i can see yeah i guess i just thought of a mango like tearing the mango and then mm-hmm. i can see like the strings and stuff yeah yeah do you fantasize uh how much of your life do you live in fantasy i live a lot of my life in my past oh. i live at my grandma's house a lot wow yeah yeah tell me more about that I to comfort yourself I think so I think also it's just like and when do you do that when do you go there in your head I feel like I go there in the morning or if I'm like really tired sometimes I'll just stare at the ceiling I'll like take myself to my grandma's house walk through it see things this is blowing my mind I gotta start asking people how they comfort themselves in their imagination more because this is blowing my mind I do it very similar in the that you're doing it to comfort yourself yeah. or in the morning. I'll do a lot when I'm driving or whatever, but I go to a different, completely different place. So you go to her house and you just remember being there as a little girl. And do you yeah. go from, is your point of view from the behind your eyes as a little girl, or do you see it more of a, like a bird's eye behind my eyes? So you see it first, like a, yeah, I go and I've recently been going to like my babysitters a lot. Yeah. Like what I relive like memories or like, walk through their house or I go to my house where I grew up when I was younger like I go to an age bracket of probably six to 11 and was that a happy time in your life or is that a time that as a child you escaped and that's the places you escaped to or you felt safe I think that it it was definitely I think I was I was I definitely had a happy childhood but there were like stresses like shit at school with the kids and like I it was happy but I I wasn't escaping anything but what my memories are very comforting um and I think that it's when I was like my fullest self I think I don't know I yeah I liked it I like being there when I go is the point yeah 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 it wasn't it was very stressful at school but it was um and like my mom and being a single mom, like I could feel that energy. I didn't like her boyfriend. Like there's a lot of stuff that I didn't like and I had really bad anxiety. I had asthma, was in the hospital a lot. Oh wow. Oh wow. So I like, had a lot of that, but then I also was like a shining star to everybody at that point in my life. Like I was my full silly self yeah, and yeah, yeah. was recognized for that. But I just had these comforts of, and I guess I think back being like, at the time, I didn't know how much I would appreciate it. But then looking back, I just feel so much comfort in being in those places. What parts of yourself being your fullest self then are not... Because I've been uh, part of something that I've been growing back into is there's somebody that I met that helped me feel safe to be my fullest self okay and it's like thank god before i die i can experience that because uh, those were ages that i really enjoyed myself to maybe a little older for me but um what parts of the that of yourself then do you wish that you could incorporate now and why do you think maybe they're not here because you have a very full life yes um I well I was gonna say it's carefree but it wasn't because I worried so much as a kid but I think um I'm like smiling because I just feel like everybody knew me for me and I felt very seen and appreciated and like influenced to be me even more mm, like right you know like, right exactly yeah. and um I I played a lot I played by myself a lot I made up dances a lot I was constantly just performing in my own little world and I think that you know what that's what it is 
I lived in my own little world and I wasn't affected besides the mean girls at school, but creatively all of it, I wasn't affected by anything around me. I just was a creative kid that was like, woo. And I'd perform for whoever and just didn't feel like I was ever bothering anybody. And now it's like, I don't live in my world. I watch other people being the creative ones. I feel like I'm bothering people instead of like, I had so much creative confidence. That's what it was. I didn't have self, you know what I mean? I had all my other shit, but I had so much creative confidence that I don't have. Yeah. Are you, is it a fear of if you are as confident as you could be, people wouldn't like you? You know, I, I, or you feel fear that people wouldn't like you. I think I'm living not in my own bubble anymore. And especially with social media and the people that were around in the industry, a lot of people like brag or they, and I shouldn't be affected by that, but I am people's successes make me be like, Oh, I, I guess I'm not, I, I feel like this industry like you need the validation or you need acceptance by people in charge and if I'm not getting the acceptance or I'm not being seen when I was a kid I was so seen like I felt like everybody loved me and not like I'm your mommy I love you just like I brought joy to everybody I was around and I could feel that power that I had and I feel like when I'm in front of audiences I get that again and I'm like okay we're back but there's so many like agents and managers and bookers and producers like I don't feel seen or loved by them so then my I diminish my confidence yeah um and I do think like I did shine a lot as a kid and I would get some people turning against me because of it and so that used to be a huge fear of mine is like if I shine people are gonna hate me and my friend Monterey calls me out sometimes because like at work if I'm like oh I I got this meal for free like or the chef made me this and then I'll be like but I feel like people are gonna be this and then she's like hey don't do it shine you know so there is a fear of shining that I have to get over um that people wouldn't like me or be jealous but then I'm like okay I'm ready to shine and then like nobody you know what yeah, I mean I'm yeah, like Netflix yeah, is a joke yeah. I'm shining yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then I'm like, wait, am I not that shiny? So so it's that result yeah. makes my confidence diminish where when I was a kid, I didn't give a fuck. I was right. just in my own world and like, it was so fun. Yeah. So yeah, it's the result. It's all based on the result is what makes the confidence go down. Yeah. And my creativity. Yeah. It's not a It's such carefree. a tough, it's such a tough industry. Yeah. Because comics are so deeply, so many of them are so deeply sad that they're vicious. Yeah. And energy stealing. Or narcissists. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really, I, it, I mean, they terrified the hell out of me. Yeah. And some are great. Like, but it's like in any job, like my mom talks about, because she was the first woman to, um, do advertising in Toronto, the first woman to work in advertising ever. And she talks about like, breaking in and then the jealousy and the way women treated her the way men and it all sounds the same yeah so yeah I think it's more so the results that have diminished my childhood when it was just like fun and carefree it was it's being creative without worrying about what happens with it yeah 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 all the time right yeah where do you where do you go I go I go (laughs) (laughs) She's like, I go into the surgical room on the bed <laughs> and oh <my> God. <laughs> I have markers all over me. <laughs> oh my God, no, I'm going to start that. I recently started joking about getting murdered on the, on the table, but like, in, there's this picture of, so there's this picture I saw of my surgeon who, and he was, um, in the middle of surgery, but they had people visiting and so they, they took a picture um, and you could tell he was, he was in the picture, but he was, his focus was still surgery focus. Yes. And, but I got to see his eyes looking at the camera with the surgery focus. <laughs> and it was a little menacing. I gotta be honest. And oh man, so good. And so <laughs> that, that's what got you. Oh Yeah. 
So I started thinking of him as like the fantasy of like like the Sweeney Todd of plastic surgeons. <laughs> That's so <laughs> And then I started fantasizing him like, this is not where I go when I yeah. just... Okay, I was like, where do you go? This is not it. So uh, and then I was like, oh man, like if you could just like, just like, just what a way to go. Like, mur- like artistically just murder me on the operating room table. Put me in my casket, no. never looking better in my life, but just cut up as fuck. No. Oh, take, I take me out. You have permission. I'll, wow. I'll, I won't, I'll be under. I'm, I'm fine. Wow. You know, t- t- you know, take it out of here. Not that I want to leave. I'm fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> She's happy. It's not a cry for help, but, she but it is a pain. sick, dark fantasy. That's so yeah. funny. Yeah, murder me. Careful, Ugh. careful what you say. These oh, people. I really should. I really should be careful. Uh, where do I go? I'll go a few places. I I do a uh, a lot of comforting myself where I'll physically go and get in bed and have my pillows in a way where I'm imagining someone's holding me. Okay. Uh, and I used to do it too much, not realizing why I was doing it. Oh. And now that I realize why I'm doing it, I can go, okay, for like 15 minutes, I'm just going to go and comfort myself in that way. And being conscious of it makes it m- more satisfying and, um, you get it out of the way. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, and so there's some fantasy there, but um, just someone being present and holding yeah, you is the fantasy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but w- all through school, all through um, my whole life, I would mine was escaping. So that's I go, and so my the the vividness of my imagination is as real as you know to a certain extent. Yeah. as being you know here, so I can. If I'm listening to music, I can choreograph in a full out wow. dance. And I mean, with 50 people, cool. I can see the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and so, which it comes in really handy when I hear a song, I can, if I want to think of a pole dance to it, I can, I'll go for a walk and I'll listen to music and go, okay, do, 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 do. And the timing like is perfect yeah the only time it comes up is if i overestimated my strength in a certain move and i actually can't you know i'm like yeah. oh that's a little too yeah. hard if i'm when i go to physically actually do it but i can choreograph like anytime i performed i can choreograph the dance in my head and then just go block it out right um so that's a very satisfying and i think I healthy yeah. place for me to go or i would fantasize uh, which I guess I was manifesting before manifesting was a thing, but, or people talked like this, I'm mean, like in high school, you know, yeah. uh, I would be in class and my brain would go to, and I would just fantasize about things I wanted to accomplish or, um, environments that I wanted to be in. And mm-hmm. it's such a vivid picture that I can see the end goal. And then in actual like 3d reality, take the day by day steps to wow. do it. That's fucking huge. I can fantasize, but I cannot take the steps to do it. It depends what it is, but to a certain extent, you know, I'm I can be fairly successful at, you know, okay, I'm going to start a studio and I'm going to start teaching classes and, yeah. or I fantasize about volunteering in a certain way. So when the opportunity comes, I go, oh, okay, I want that. And then these are the steps to get there. Yeah. Uh, the podcast is going to start, I'm going to start, I'm very nervous about it and uh like ooh, like excited but i am gonna start you know one-on-one inter- interviewing the surgeons because oh. they are just endlessly fascinating and it's perfect for them yeah. because they do have a very godlike complex yeah. they want the attention i'm excellent at giving attention yes, yeah, yeah, so yeah. i want to start moving in that direction but i can so that's one where i can see the end goal okay and I know the steps of how to get there. And I just procrastinate a little bit because, yeah. you know, sometimes it is, I, you, on a, on a previous episode I talked about, I said, I was thinking of a word. I was trying to think of a word and uh, I was talking to Josh about something and I said, I'm calculated. And 
that may be true, but I think calculated it gets so um, related to manipulative. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. And that's not, I'm really not a manipulative yeah. person. I'm too direct for that. But uh, I'm intentional. Right. Yeah. And um, where I can be intentional. But the problem that comes up with that is because I can be so intentional, I'm also so naive that some things might, you might go, oh, she knew what she was doing and I'll shock the hell out of you. I absolutely did yeah, not yeah, know yeah. what I was what I was doing. I can see in retrospect why, it looks, why that way. it looks that way. Yeah, for sure. And sure, I would be guilty if you put me in front of a jury, like they would go like, oh, this, you know, yeah. but like my true nature is not, you know. Yeah, to do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but so I can be very intentional and... I think part of being successful with being intentional is being patient as long as like, like that patient isn't, ex- isn't just fear going, Oh, I'm just going to wait. Yeah, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah, have yeah. to like balance. Yeah. Well, am I not doing it? Cause I'm afraid. Yeah. Or am I not doing it because it's not the right time. And I think when it is the right time, it's so obvious to like, What's, what's that like strike when the iron's hot yes I think yes yes so obvious that like oh here let me let me send that email now yeah 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 where i i also am a procrastinator mm-hmm. so i just have to be honest with myself in day to day which yeah. is what's procrastinating and what's just waiting for the right time that's a good point that's a good point because i'm like i procrastinate so much uh, but then it's yeah. and it causes me stress yeah and then the day goes by and you're like shit i didn't do this I know. You're like getting my passport picture. Like, why am I not getting my passport picture? Can't done today. No. Oh. No, I, got, I have to get my hair done. It's way more important. <laughs> I felt like after you did it, that was a good time. Uh, can you just do that? You can just pop yeah, in and get it? Yeah, you just pop in. Because I know what place I'm going to. It's pop this cute in. little place. And every time I drive by, I go, when I get my, pa- my new passport picture, I'm going to get that. Pop in. It's, yeah. I have a, uh, what, what, what time are we at? We're at 56 minutes. Oh, great. Yeah. Let's finish up. Uh, we'll finish up on a, because I like to be fair. I've okay. been, we did, we weren't heavy on the plastic surgery stuff. Okay. This episode, but I had been very, I'm pretty, I can be pretty hard on the surgeons. Uh-huh. Um, whipping some of their behavior and shape. And sometimes I realize Josh got such a kick out of it that I mean, I can okay. be very mean. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so I'm working on. Uh, I'm still, I said in the last episode, I'm still going to be mean, but I'm just going to be lighter about it. Okay. Be lighter about my Because meanness. I don't even know you were trying to shop for a different surgeon. Yeah. Okay. We're not doing that. We're going back to the old one. It's a little complicated. Okay. Okay. So tell, okay. So. I can't emotion. I don't, I don't think I could emotionally go to anyone else. Okay. Okay. With that said, I don't know if I would be welcome to go. <laughs> I don't know. I have no okay, idea. Okay. So where? Okay. So what? What is your plastic surgery? All my fault. Topic? I take all the, all the blame. Um. Wait. What were we talking about? You were talking. You were going to tell me that Josh says you're mean to the surgeon. Oh, so I mean you to want the to close on your oh, plastic oh, oh, surgery. So just talk. to say, fair is fair. Um. Uh that I will also offer up my own vulnerabilities and, and insecurities to say, Hey, you know, I understand that we're all human. So I know that I may say things that sting, yeah, but that sting is usually a sign that it's probably true and that we can go, yes, it's stung, but maybe I do need to okay. change this anyway. Okay. Just bringing up the passport thing, I have a, and this still isn't the deep security that I mentioned a few episodes ago. You guys, I'm that one. I'm just going to keep to myself. But uh, I, one of my deep insecurities is how little I've traveled. Oh, yeah, okay. I've traveled very outside of the country. I've driven across the country. I've been okay. in every strip club from here to New York and back. Yeah. But um, outside of the country, I've only traveled a two or three times okay and whoa. yeah Damn. and right. i have a deep deep insecurity about it because of what it says my parents didn't take us traveling and then i married someone who you would think and he traveled a lot 
and you would think would have that my lifestyle was that yeah and it wasn't and I think it's so interesting how we marry sometimes if we're not healed yet we marry the same kind of thing yes and so I did that and it makes me feel like the equivalent of not having read a book or something, you know what I mean? There's a whole part of my life that, so like if you wanted to hurt me because I've hurt you in some way, there is an open wound for you. If you want, I'm willing to, you know, fair is fair. Okay. So you're, the point of saying this is you're giving your wounds away. Yeah. So if you enter their office and you sting them, they well so that's the fun so that's the interesting thing we know how we talked about the mob the we're talking the people were kind of like dealing with the mob no offense very demanding group of people but um and kind and loving we love you (laughs) um eat i'm a i i my nature is that i with a distance i can be mean yes but i would never be mean you know, unless there's somebody that I'm in a perf- personal like beef with yeah, for some yeah, reason, yeah. then I could really yeah. slice you with my tongue. Yeah. But uh, if I'm interviewing these doctors, those interviews are not going to be those are ego boot like uh, uh, yeah. business here. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. those are ego boosting. And generally, I'm so curious about people and interested in people. It's there's not a judgment. I just want to know more. Tell me why you do this. What's the th- you okay. know behind all that? Yeah. So once I'm starting to talk to them in person is. Uh, it's a different yeah animal there but uh on top of that if you want me to and and then i wouldn't go once i've made that connection with someone yeah. i'm not going to shit on you in my stories right i made a relation i have yeah. a relationship with you yeah. now i'm not gonna go and be like t- two-faced about yeah. it uh but if you want me to be nice to you then you should absolutely accept an interview opportunity with me. <laughs> if you don't want me judging the way you operate on social media, you should absolutely say yes when I ask to have an interview. Is this a threat? Is No, no. Well, I've gotten, I throw out the, th- I mean, yeah, I guess so. A little bit. I mean, I can say no. It's an ultimatum. But that might be some shadow talk. It's a bribe. It's a bribe. It's a, it's a gentle suggestion <laughs> that, it's uh, a warning. it's a warning. It's an offer. It's an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> Cause if you do, she'll sting you more. <laughs> We love you. Have a great week. (laughs) If you want my feet, Venmo me. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes.